All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, at any point in time, if you uh, do speak, please just identify yourself if we have not identified you at that time. Uh, if we can, call to order. Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Lloyd. Present. Alderman Cohn. Commissioner Bennington. Present. Commissioner Moran. Present. Commissioner Bradley. Present. Commissioner Long. Present. Commissioner People. Present. Commissioner Goodman. Here. Commissioner Vine. Present. Chair Strother. Present. And you have a nine. With that, I thank you again. I invite anybody that's on Zoom with us that will be present for the uh, public meeting. If you would like to speak, we'd ask that you go to the chat, include your name and organization at the appropriate time. We'll call on you at that point. Um, let me first just hope everybody had a safe and happy Thanksgiving, as solid or quiet as it may have been. Uh, with that, uh, the commissioners, the first thing I want to do is the approval of minutes. From the November 18th minute, uh, I'll take a motion. So before we do that, I'd like to seek a correction in the minute. In the, uh, this is Commissioner Bradley. In the second paragraph where it says uh, Commissioner Law moves to approve, it says Alderman Bradley. I'm pretty sure I have not been elevated to that prestigious role. I would prefer it be changed to Commissioner Bradley. Thank you. So noted, we will deep. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a promotion, demotion. We'll make the change for Commissioner Bradley. With that, any other changes or corrections? I'll entertain the motion then. With uh, I have a motion from Commissioner Bradley. Do I hear a second? Second. I second by Commissioner Goodman. Uh, roll call vote, please. Alderman Boyd. Abstain. Commissioner Benson. Aye. Commissioner Boyd. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Long. Aye. Commissioner People. Aye. Commissioner Goodman. Aye. Commissioner Vine. Aye. Commissioner Strather. Aye. Thank you very much for that. Uh, as a point of housekeeping, if you have your agenda items, commissioners, let me rearrange them. We're going to do them a little bit different for for ease of pre presentation and and uh, support. Uh, action items rezoning number eight, nine, and ten will be first. 8, 9, and 10 will be first. Cecilia will walk us through those. Then we'll come up for public hearing number 3, 4, 6, and 7. 3, 4, 6, and 7 will be presented by Roman, and then we'll come back for number 5 by Cecilia. So and at this point, uh, and number 11, I'm sorry. Uh, I keep missing that one. Okay. All right, with that, uh, number PDA 08220-REZ, rezoning of Page Boulevard. Uh, Cecilia, if you want to go ahead and make the announcement that you want to make at this point. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I just want to let you all know that um, I'm going to be covering these items. They were actually other uh, reports were put together by our new staff member, Alexa Sera, and um, she is unfortunately um, on bereavement leave at the moment. Her um, uh, brother-in-law passed away, and so um, you know our, our thoughts and prayers are with her uh, and her family as they're working through this tough time as well. Um, but I'll, I'll certainly get us started with Page Boulevard. Uh, so this uh, rezoning is at 36303 Page Boulevard in the Covenant Blue Grand Center neighborhood. The site is approximately 0.76 acres in size and is being used uh, currently as a retail strip center with up to seven tenant spaces. Some of the uses currently on the site include retail, uh, child daycare, restaurant, and office space. 
The request before you this evening is to rezone from C, multiple family dwelling district, to G, local commercial and office district. The construction of the building was permitted via a variance in 2016, and numerous variances have been granted since to allow for each individual business to occupy the space in a multifamily dwelling district. Um, the request would therefore allow for the future tenants to be permitted as a use by right, according to the district um, of G uh, commercial district. And it is consistent with the adjacent zoning district across the street um, and is in compliance with strategic land use plan. So I can go through those details now. This is the current zoning of the site. As I mentioned, and as you can see, the request would be consistent with the zoning designation across Page Boulevard. This is the strategic land use plan map. Given that the request is to allow for the use of a commercial space currently existing and that the neighborhood commercial area designation aims to allow for commercial development that serves the adjacent neighborhoods, staff does find the request in compliance with the strategic land use plan designation. For a little bit of context, um, this is a photo of the subject site as it currently sits today. This is the adjacent building to the east. It's an existing motel. And this is to the west, an adjacent parking lot and building um, on the street, a uh, residential building. And across the street, this is a shopping center, which includes a Save-A-Lot, Little Caesars Pizza, Rainbow Retail Store, among other chain and small business stores. For the zoning administrator, the request would provide improved commercial opportunities in the immediate area and bring it into conformity with its current and future uses and allow for good zoning practices toward the elimination of improper zoning designations. Additionally, staff finds the request in conformity with the strategic land use plan neighborhood commercial area and recommends approval. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Additionally, I believe there's a petitioner on the line as well. Very good. Thank you, Cecilia. As commissioners know, I will simply go through allowing uh, for questions from commissioners, uh, beginning with Alderman Boyd, then at that point followed by Commissioner Banton. Alderman Boyd, any questions? I have no questions. Just my comment is this is a good tool. This is a very good thing to do. Uh, as an alderman who often uh, get asked to provide letters of support for conditional use, um, it's easy if it's already zoned appropriately and it's one less step that the applicant has to go through. So I appreciate more and more of these. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Manson, any questions? Uh, just curious on why this is coming before us now, or is the petitioner trying to change the property anyway that's being pre prevented by the existing zoning? No. Uh, no. At the moment, they're just trying to uh, eliminate the need to get uh, variances. For every tenant. Yep. Was there a reason that this was, uh, uh, change in zoning wasn't sought for at the time of construction instead of just a variance? Uh, I was not here at the time, so I'm, I'm not sure of the history. Um, Mary, uh, the zoning administrator, might be able to chime in. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So there is no particular reason that they didn't um, seek a variance back in 2016 when they built, uh, I'm sorry, there's no particular reason that they didn't seek a rezoning back in 2016 whenever they made their building permit application. Um, at that time, the variance granted them permission to build the building, but they did not have their tenants lined up. It was just white box. So the variance didn't cover any uses. So since that time, they've had to come back each time they have a tenant that wants to go in and go through the Board of Adjustment. And they have never, they've always had automatic support when they've come to the Board of Adjustment. They've never had anything turned down. And just out of curiosity for anyone that's seeking to build something that conflicts with the zoning, is it easier to, is it often easier to get a variance than it is to go through the rezoning process, which is why this happens so often? Or what's, what's any particular that, reasoning for that? I don't know that I would say that it's easier. I would say that it's quicker hmm. than doing a rezoning. And when I'm looking at the time that this building permit application came in, 
the board of aldermen would have been down because this would have come in in the spring. And so I suspect that that's why they chose to go the variance route. Got it. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Boyer, followed by Commissioner Bradley. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Bradley, followed by Commissioner Long. Thank you. Hearing no questions from Commissioner Bradley, Commissioner Long, followed by Commissioner Peoples. Commissioner Long? Uh, just sort of curious what the, the tenants are on the property in the, in the, in the facility there. Um, the petitioner may be able to respond to that better than I can at the moment. Is the petitioner for um, the Page Boulevard on? Is that Mr. Logan? Yes. Okay. Can you answer the question for the mission? What was the question? I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Just asking uh, what... Yeah, what are the kind of tenants that are on the property currently? There's a there's a restaurant there. There's an office. There's actually I think there's two restaurants there, and there's a, there's an office, and and there's a, a a daycare. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Long, Commissioner Peoples. No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Goodman. No question. Commissioner Vines. No question. Thank you. And the chair has no questions at this time. So, Cecilia, would you set the recommendation so we can go call for vote? Absolutely. Um, PDA uh, staff recommends uh, that the commission find the rezoning in conformity with the SLOOP and recommend approval of the proposed rezoning. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve, Jake. Second, Tracy. Thank you. Is it moved by uh, Commissioner Jake and then second by Commissioner Boaz? Call for vote. Alderman Bowen? Aye. Commissioner Bannon? Aye. Commissioner Boaz? Aye. Commissioner Bradley? Aye. Commissioner Long? Aye. Commissioner Peoples? Aye. Commissioner Goodman? Aye. Commissioner Vine. Uh, hi. Aye. Commissioner Vine. Aye. And motion passes without further voting on. Thank you very much. We'll move on to 91 20 REV. That's at Forest Park Avenue. Thank you. Yes. Um, this is for two parcels in the Midtown neighborhood, uh, totaling 15.23 acres is currently home to the city foundry, which is under construction uh, and, and somewhat occupied, um, as well as some vacant lots and vacant parking lots. Um, the request before you this evening is to rezone the property from K on restricted district to H area commercial district due to the fact that the unrestricted district does not permit residential. See you in the next slide. The current zoning of the site, as you can see, would be consistent with um, other zoning designations in the area across Forest Park Avenue. The strategic land use plan map, which designates the site as specialty mixed use area, um, given that the request is to allow for the use of a multifamily residential among existing commercial office multifamily buildings, as well as um, having some office and parking within the uh, residential building as well, staff does find that the request is in compliance with the strategic land use plan. This is a rendering of the subject site provided by the petitioner. And this is also a close-up of the rendering, including the building that's to be developed as the second phase of construction for the foundry. Um, sitting 13 to 14 stories tall and including about 282 units, a total of 8,700 square feet of retail and 75,700 square feet of office, as well as 494 parking spaces. These are some contact photos, including uh, the multifamily development to the northwest, office and educational religious to the northeast, regional commercial use, the IKEA to the west, and restaurant brewing company to the east, and of course, Highway, Interstate 60, Highway 40, Interstate 64 to the south. Per the zoning administrator, 
The request would provide for improved residential and commercial opportunities. It would also bring it into conformity with its um, current and intended future uses and allow for good zoning practices that work toward the elimination of improper zoning designations. Additionally, staff finds that the request is in conformity with the strategic land use plan, specialty mixed use area, and recommends approval. Uh, there are also a number of uh, a number of people representing the project and the petitioner available to answer questions, as well as myself, if you have any. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, again, we'll start with Alderman Boyd. Questions? No questions. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, Commissioner Manton. Um, just curious. So the K designation labeled unrestricted district actually does have restrictions <laughs> to residential in it. Yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, there's some <laughs> exceptions there um, to existing mm -hmm. uh, buildings if there is residential on site or on the block. But yes, it, that is that is the funny thing about it. Just another reason we need a revamp of our whole zoning code. All right, no questions. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Boas. No question. Commissioner Bradley. No question. Commissioner Long. Uh, I do have a quick question uh, for staff. Do we know if the uh, this project will be asking the city for any sort of development incentives or will be taking advantage of the existing uh, TIF district that was created for city foundry? Thank you. I actually do not have the answer to that question, but the petitioner may be able to respond. This is, this is Steve Smith. I'm oh, Steve okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, we received a tip for this property uh, several years ago, and so we are not asking for any new additional city support at this time. And then my second question has to do with the structured parking. Uh, how many spaces and why is that so important to the project? So we have uh, 282 apartment units, so we want to accommodate those, and we also have uh, 75,000 square foot of office and uh, accommodate that. And we also are replacing a 175 space lot that is there, that was proposed to be there as part of phase one. And so we need to accommodate that parking that is servicing the retail of phase one. So it is those three uses in combination that we are accommodating for. Thank you. I don't think I had realized that, and obviously there's just been a lot of conversation lately about um, surface parking and structured parking in, in, in the city, so I appreciate that, uh, and I think this is an exciting expansion to see what's going on in Midtown, so thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Commissioner Peoples? No questions. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Goodman. No questions. Commissioner Vines? Uh, no questions, but I want to commend uh, uh, a new addition to Midtown, um, and it's nice to see uh, the city redensifying. Thank you, Commissioner Rod. Uh, I would say there is a, a support letter in the packet from Alderman Modi of the 17th for the process. Uh, with that, the recommendation was to uh, current classification from K uh, to H. I'll entertain a motion. So moved, Commissioner Banton. Second by Second Commissioner Long. Previous roll. Second by Commissioner Vive. Call for previous roll. Any objections? Hearing no objections, passed with previous roll. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. It, it's Don. Steve, are you still on? Steve Smith? Yes, Steve. Steve, would you just be yeah, out here? Would you just make a mention of the importance and the relevance of the brick line? Uh, into this project uh, yeah. as a way that will sort of lessen potentially some of the need for parking and just be another mode of access? Uh, yes, thank you, Don. So we um, we are bit, uh, blessed, I guess, if you could say, with an old rail spur that comes into the middle of the city foundry site that is part of the plan for the, the Brookline Trail that is in, in its current design. And that would give our re residents, office workers, and, and uh Providers, if you will, of the retail to be able to access our site from uh, the surrounding area at Cortex, St. Louis University, and ultimately uh, the two Metrolink sites, the one at Grand Center, or, I'm sorry, Grand Avenue, and the other one in Cortex, mm -hmm. all accessible to our site by the brick line. You can see it in that image there is the 
the kind of S shape in the foreground. That's an abandoned uh, Norfolk Southern Rail Spur that's part of the Brickland Master Plan. Thanks, Steve. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. I'll, I'll send a question for later. Uh, number 9320 Rezone. Uh, this is Bill and Avenue. Yeah. Uh, this next rezoning is for five parcels in the Clayton Tam neighborhood. The site is 0.97 acres in size and is currently uh, vacant land and single family unoccupied home. The request before you this evening is to rezone from A, single family dwelling district, to C, multiple family dwelling district in order to construct a multifamily building with 21 residential units for families that would likely average three to four months stays, um, who, along with common space, office for the units, and associated parking. The construction of this multifamily building would provide some transition of intensity in land use from the predominantly single family housing to the north and west to the predominantly commercial and light industrial uses to the east and south. So next slide. This is the current zoning of the site. As you can see, the request would provide a transition of multifamily zoning between the single family district to the north and west and uh, the commercial and industrial districts to the east and south. This is the strategic land use plan, which designates the site as neighborhood preservation area. Given that the request is to allow for the development of multifamily units on the periphery of a neighborhood and that the neighborhood preservation area designation aims to allow for new infill construction that is sensitive to the character of existing residences, staff does find the request in compliance with the strategic land use plan. For some context, these are photos of the surrounding development to the subject site, single family to the north and west, restaurant to the east, light industrial to the south, and a multifamily building, formerly the graduate school, to the southeast. This is the proposed site plan at the moment, showing a three-story building with associated parking. Per the zoning administrator, the request would provide improved residential opportunities in the immediate area and bring it into conformity with its intended future use, also allowing for good zoning practices toward the elimination of improper zoning designations. Additionally, staff does find a request in conformity with the SLOOP. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I also believe there's a representative uh, of the petitioner available online as well. All right. Thank I, you very much. I also uh, do want to know, um, that it's not required, but we did also receive a letter of express support from the alderman today uh, who indicated his support for the petition and uh, the ongoing conversations with the neighborhood association that support the project. Thank you. So, see, yeah, I'm just getting ready to ask about that. Yeah. Uh, starting Commissioner Boyd, then Commissioner Banton. Commissioner Boyd. Any questions? Thank you, Commissioner Banton. Uh, just a quick question. So, this is intended to serve folks that might be receiving, like, medical treatment, for example, and their family needs a temporary place to stay, sort of like a long term hotel, but it's not a hotel, or is it a hotel? Uh, because of the longer term nature of it, it is not considered a hotel. Um, but yes, that that is the the, the intent. Hello. Okay. No further questions. Okay. Commissioner Boaz. No questions. Commissioner Bradley. Then Commissioner Long. Commissioner Bradley. Thank you. Commissioner Long. Uh, no questions. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Peoples and Commissioner Goodman. Commissioner Peoples. No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Goodman. No questions. Commissioner Vaughn. Uh, is there a rendering of the proposed project or is it too premature right now? I I do not have one, no. Okay. Thank you. No, no further questions. All right. Thank you. With that, the uh, recommendation from staff is just a rezone from A to Z. A to C is in Charlie. Uh, entertain a motion. Move to approve. Signed. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner uh, Vine, seconded by Commissioner Boyatz. Call for previous roll. Hearing any objections? Hearing no objections, approved by previous roll. Thank you very much, Cecilia, for your first stop there. Uh, as we prepare for the public hearing, if you are present and you are here to or would like to speak, I would ask at this point that you go to the chat area, place your name and the organization you're with, 
and at the appropriate time, we'll identify and call on you at that point. Uh, what we do, Robin, we'll make the presentation, uh, then we'll move into the, plan the action items after we close the public hearing. So at this moment, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved, Bradley. Second, Bynes. It's been moved it's by Bradley, seconded by Commissioner Bynes. Call the vote. Mr. Chairman, I think it'd, it'd be uh, it'd be better if we made Pretty the presentation well. first and, and then the public hearing. Okay, I was I was under the impression public hearing had to be in the in the uh, open in the um, oh, public hearing. I'm sorry, the presentation had to be in the public hearing. So at that point, we'll go ahead and then we'll come back to the motion. So go ahead. Very good. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, commission. Uh, this is a presentation and a public hearing for amendment number 21 of the strategic land use plan of the uh, St. Louis Comprehensive Plan, or SLOOP, uh, as we uh, uh, shorten its name. Um, I'll start off by making the presentation that summarizes this particular amendment. Uh, following the presentation, a public hearing will be uh, conducted by the Planning Commission. And following that public hearing, the Planning Commission will vote on the adoption of, of SLOOP Amendment Number 21. If that amendment is approved, uh, there are two related rezonings which will be presented to the Planning Commission for, re for your review. Next slide, please. Um, the map on the right is the current uh, strategic land use plan map for the city. Uh, as you know, each block in the city is designated as one of the 10 sloop categories that are listed in the legend on the left. Um, the uh, categories uh, in general include uh, uh, land uses such as neighborhood or residential, commercial, business slash industrial, institutional, and specially mixed use, just to name a few. Uh, uh, as you know, the uh, uh, sloop was adopted back in 2005 by the Planning Commission. It's been amended 20 times since then, and a sloop amendment basically changes a site's uh, sloop category from one category to another. This particular sloop amendment was prompted by a change in vision for two large underutilized sites, and uh, this would facilitate the development of a mixed-use development project at each of those two sites. The first is located in the Forest Park Southeast neighborhood on McCree Avenue. The development project would consist of 260 apartments, uh, a minimal amount of commercial space, and some structured parking. And the second site is located in the near North Riverfront neighborhood uh, along uh, the 2000 block of North Broadway. It would consist of 146 apartments, uh, approximately 11,000 square feet of commercial space, and 114 parking spaces. The, um, the first site is at 4565-91 McCree Avenue and includes the three parcels that are shown in the red outline. Hopefully you can make that out. The, uh, this is a very industrial area, and there are two railroad lines that are located both north and east of uh, this particular site. The uh, 4565 and 4565 rear parcels are currently being redeveloped as a dog park, restaurant, and office complex. You may remember that we had a uh, redevelopment plan for this particular project uh, uh, several months or so ago. The, um, the third parcel, 4591, which is the parcel uh, furthest on the, uh, on the west or left, is the site of the uh, proposed mixed-use project, which would include the apartments, commercial space, and structured parking. However, the existing sloop category and the uh, K zoning district doesn't allow residential uses, and so that's the reason for the proposed sloop amendment and rezoning. In the course of reviewing uh, this particular site for a sloop amendment, we became aware of some potential interest in also redeveloping the two large industrial parcels that are located to the east and those two parcels are shown in the green outline. Uh, you might see two large industrial building footprints on, on those parcels. Um, so we're recommending that these parcels also have their sloop categories changed at the same time as a, a proactive measure. And the reason they weren't included initially with the three other parcels is uh, they weren't included in the public notice ad that was uh, posted in the, um, in the two required publications. Next slide, please. Um, 
The two photos that you see in front of you are some photos of the development project that is currently underway at 4565 McCree Avenue, and this is where Bar K will be opening the combination dog park and restaurant, um, as well as uh, some office space in that particular complex. I should point out that th this project has already begun. It doesn't need a rezoning, but we're including it in the rezoning um, uh, for consistency purposes um, with the uh, adjacent parcel. Um, next slide, please. These are some photos of the vacant industrial building at 4591 McCree Avenue. This is the parcel uh, on the west. And this building would be demolished and replaced with the uh, mixed-use development project. This next slide is a rendering of the uh, dog park, restaurant, and office space. Um, you can see that in the foreground. There's some trails uh, that show where the uh, some of the dog activities and amenities would take place. And the brown building that you could sort of make off and make a little bit uh, in the background is the industrial building, um, which will be demolished um, and for the mixed-use development project. That project is still in the uh, preliminary stages, and there are no um, renderings uh, uh, that are currently available. The two photos in front of you uh, now are the two large parcels that are located to the east that may be redeveloped in the future. Um, we're recommending, again, that the Planning Commission make a motion to change the sloop categories for these two parcels in addition to the three other parcels that uh, uh, we've discussed. Uh, I should point out that this would not affect the, uh, the property rights of, of the existing property owners. They, of course, would be able to stay um, uh, at their current location as well as the current uses. The uh, existing sloop map on the left shows the, uh, the three parcels uh, at 4565 to 4591 McCree, as well as the adjacent parcels uh, to the east. They're designated as a business industrial development area, or a BIDA, shown in the dark uh, gray. And again, uh, uh, that doesn't allow residential uses. Uh, the proposed sloop map on the right shows that we're proposing that the three parcels uh, on McCree Avenue, as well as the parcels located to the east, uh, ending at uh, Vandeventer Avenue, be changed to an opportunity area, uh, which is a more flexible category, if you recall. Um, and those typically apply where the land use is in transition. Obviously, with the dog park and, and uh, slash restaurant and other uh, creative types of uh, uses, uh, uh, being developed in the area, this, this uh, definitely qualifies as an area that uh, is going through a bit of a transition. The, um, so I mentioned that there were uh, two sites uh, as part of this sloop amendment. Uh, we just went through the first one. The second one is uh, City Block 320, uh, which is bounded by North Broadway on the west, Madison on the uh, north, North 2nd Street on the east, and um, Chamber Street on the south. As you can see in this aerial photo, this is, a, again, a very heavily industrial area uh, with many large building footprints. Um, these are some photos of the large warehouse building on the block uh, that would be redeveloped. Uh, the building is a, approximately 150,000 square foot in size and was recently listed on the National Register. Uh, it's currently mostly vacant, according to the petitioner, except for some long-term uh, storage space. And there's also a vacant lot on the block. Uh, the building uh, almost occupied the entire block. A portion of it was, uh, was torn down, so there's a vacant lot uh, on a portion of the block. The, uh, the site is owned by Blackline Real Estate, which is proposing a mixed-use development project. Again, this is 146 apartments. 11,000 square feet of commercial space and uh, 114 parking spaces. This is a rendering, obviously, of the, the completed project. And again, the uh, this, uh, existing sloop category in the zoning district don't allow for residential. And these are some photos of the adjacent industrial uses along North Broadway. You can see that some of the uh, industrial buildings are modern, one-story, uh, uh, traditional industrial buildings. Uh, on the other hand, there are some older multi-story uh, buildings that uh, could be suited for uh, conversion to residential or other uses um, in the future. The uh, 
Existing sloop map on the left shows uh, City Block 320 uh, designated as a business industrial preservation area, which doesn't allow, again, residential uses. The proposed sloop map on the right, uh, we're proposing that the site be changed to a specially mixed use area, which encourages a, a mix of land uses. The uh, site is also located within the boundaries of the North uh, Riverfront Commerce Corridor Land Use Plan, uh, which was adopted uh, by the Planning Commission a few years ago, and it uh, encourages residential uses on the upper floors of, of buildings in that particular portion of the, uh, the planning area. Um, so that's my uh, presentation on Sloop Amendment Number 21. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, if there are no questions, uh, we could move to the, uh, the public hearing. Very good. Thank you, Roman. We will entertain the questions from the commissioners prior to the public hearing. Uh, I'll begin with uh, Commissioner Boyd. Any questions? You're muted, Commissioner Boyd, if you're... We'll come back, I'll come back to Commissioner Banton if you have any questions. Yes, thank you. Um, so for the um, Black Line Mixed Use Project up there along the riverfront, um, what neighborhood is that technically, and is there a plan, an adopted plan for that area? The, the name of the neighborhood is the Near North Riverfront neighborhood, which basically stretches from downtown northward. It's a fairly large um, neighborhood, uh, although it's not a traditional neighborhood in that there are very, very few uh, residential uses there. It's primarily a business and, and uh, uh, commercial area. Um, uh, it is located not within a neighborhood plan, but within a topical plan uh, that was uh, prepared um, a few years or so ago uh, uh, with the uh, heavy input of the St. Louis uh, Development Corporation as a means of uh, revitalizing the uh, commercial and industrial district that lines that area basically north of the Cleve Landing, uh, and I'm not sure how far the near North Riverfront neighborhood uh, goes, but it, it goes considerably uh, far north. Um, where it links up with, I believe, what's called the, the North Riverfront neighborhood, which does have some residential uses. So we do have a topical plan in place, but no neighborhood plan. And again, uh, the recommendation for a part of that uh, uh, topical plan uh, for what was called the Market District uh, was calling for uh, continued use of the ground floor for commercial and industrial uses uh, but where feasible uh, to introduce residential uses on the upper floors. Uh, and as you saw in the photograph, some of the buildings, uh, the more recent industrial buildings tend to be one-story buildings, but you do have a fair number of, of multi-story buildings uh, that uh, may be suitable for adaptive reuse. Is the, so the plan you're talking about, was that the one um, that was produced or helped produced by Forum and was was done when this the football stadium was proposed in that area and all that jazz, or is that something totally different that I'm thinking of? I, I'm talking, fancy new office buildings and stuff planned yeah. for that area. You know, I'm, I'm talking about the, the plan that uh, it, it basically extended from, don't know how far south it started, but it basically went from there all the way up to... Um, near the Baden area, that, that entire stretch of the riverfront. It was a very, well, Commissioner, very... This is Don. The dividing point between the work that Chip did with us uh, was the uh, uh, Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge. Uh, so this is north of there. Uh, and uh, uh, it goes for a long way, but it starts north of that. It is not the one that Chip and... Uh, Right, what was Greenway and PDA and SODC co cooperated with. Got it. plan that is being referenced and talked about a topical plan did call, as Roman's saying, this southern portion be prepped to uh, transition to different uses. Got it. Okay. And then um, my last question about the other side. Um, so if we are proactive in changing these destinations, you had mentioned that it wouldn't pro or cause any issues for the existing property owners, but um, if they sold to a, a 
a new entity that wanted to continue that use? Would that be an issue at that point? Uh, no. Uh, uh, basically, an, uh, an opportunity area, which is what we're recommending that the site uh, be changed to, basically uh, allows a lot of flexibility in, in the types of uses that are allowed. Um, and that includes any type of use. Uh, if for whatever reason uh, those the owners of those two uh, parcels elect to sell it to somebody who wants to continue an industrial use, that, that would certainly be fine. Um, it, it, what it does do is provide, a, 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 again, a lot of flexibility in terms of, of what kind of land use is allowed. Um, the, the other thing is, uh, uh, well, I guess that's the, the, the best way of putting it. Uh, it allows for uh, uh, much flexibility. And, and it primarily is designated in areas where the, uh, the land use is going through some sort of a transition. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to go through a transition, but there's, uh, in looking at the site, clearly some things are going on. Part of that is it's near uh, Interstate 44. Obviously, property is, is valuable near uh, uh, interstate uh, uh, junctions. Um, and there's been a lot of development happening to the north in the Forest Park Southeast neighborhood, as well as um, some commercial development along Tower Grove Avenue. So I think people are sort of looking at that area with, with uh, open eyes. You get it. Commissioner, I'll, I'll just add to that is, as you'll see, this is an area that's potentially transitioning, has transitioned with the dog park. There'll be an upcoming zoning change for a portion of this area, but we're not changing the zoning out from under these property owners. They can do by right what's in the existing zoning. The opportunity area will allow some flex flexibility in the future. And if they were to seek an incentive to continue their business in some fashion, uh, we could still do it with the opportunity. Very good. I know that uh, commissioners, including myself, have inquired about being a little bit more proactive on these sloop changes, so I I'm happy to, to see that this as much fun as these are. If we can get ahead of ourselves, I think that's great. So thank you, no further questions. Thank you, Commissioner Banton. Yeah, we're having a thrill. Commissioner Boaz. <laughs> no question. Commissioner Bradley. No question. Commissioner Long. No questions at this time. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Peoples. No questions. Commissioner Goodman. No question. Commissioner Vines. No question. No, no questions from the chair. With that, then, uh, at this point, uh, what I would do, th there was a motion on the floor to open the public hearing. I'll enter that motion has been made and seconded. Call the vote. Mr. Chairman, I'd just, like, I, I just like to add that uh, uh, 
there's been a, uh, a public notice ad that was published in a, a couple of newspapers uh, asking for any comments. We have not received any review comments whatsoever uh, between now and today. All right, thank you, Roman. With that, I'll again, going once, hearing no request for public hearing, going twice, no, no request to close. At this point, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll move, Bradley. Second, Boaz. Been moved and seconded. Call for vote. Previous roll. Call for previous roll. Hearing any objections? Hearing no objections to the to the previous roll. We have now closed the public hearing. Thank you very much, Roman, for the presentation. Uh, at this point, he will also lead us now through items number four, six, and seven, uh, which have to do with this item. So, Roman, I'll let you go at this point. Very good. So, the next step uh, uh, is. Uh Regarding the adoption of, of SLOOP Amendment Number 21 is, is, is voting um, on the amendment. EDA staff is recommending the um, approval of Amendment Number 21 of the uh, Strategic Land Use Plan as listed in the resolutions uh, to Exhibit A table. So those basically include three parcels at uh, 4565 to 4591 McCree and the three parcels um, at City Block 320. Um, and PDA staff, as I mentioned earlier, is further recommending that the uh, Planning Commission make a motion to approve the uh, addition of the uh, adjacent parcels um, that uh, uh, are east of the, uh, the three parcels on McCree, uh, so as to include all the parcels going to Vandeventer Avenue, adding those to Sloop Amendment Number 21. Uh, if the amendment is approved, uh, PDA staff will uh, take care of updating the map, uh, posting it on our website, and notifying um, the required city departments. And then we proceed with um, reviewing the, uh, the two rezonings. Um, as a reminder, the, uh, the three parcels at um, 4565 uh, through 91 McCree Avenue plus the two adjacent parcels to the east that uh, butt up against Vandeventer Avenue are proposed to be changed from the business industrial development area uh, to the opportunity area. And then the three parcels in city block 320 are proposed to be changed from the business industrial preservation area to the specially mixed use area. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions and, and then at uh, uh, it, it's uh, time to vote on the uh, approval. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion for the recommended action by the commission, by the uh, staff. Would you mind going back to that first slide so we can see those addresses of those parcels, please, to add? Great. Yeah. So I recommend approval of uh, Sloop Amendment 21 with the addition of 1525, 1601, and 1625 South Vandevander Avenue uh, as opportunity zones. I'll second that amendment. I mean, that, that motion rather. <laughs> Is it moved? <laughs> Not Commissioner Vance, it's second by Commissioner Boaz. Told you we're having fun. Call for vote. Previous roll. Call for previous roll. Hearing any objections? Hearing no objections approved with previous roll. That was number item four. We now move to, I'm sorry, that was, yeah, we move now to uh, 8420 rezoning. Uh, Roman number, number six on everybody's agenda. Yeah, um, so with uh, Sloop Amendment number 21, let me proceed to the two related rezonings um, uh, that were included uh, in, the, in the amendment. Uh, this is a proposed rezoning of three parcels, 4565, 4565 Rear, and 4591 McCree Avenue from the K Unrestricted District to the H Area Commercial District. The site is uh, approximately 10 acres in, in uh, size, uh, located in an industrial portion of Forest Park Southeast. The existing uses are two vacant buildings and a vacant lot. Um, what's being proposed on the 4591 McCree Avenue parcel is the uh, construction of a mixed-use development project that uh, we had discussed. Uh, the K zoning district doesn't allow residential uses, uh, which is why the petitioner has requested uh, the rezoning. The petitioner is Green Street uh, Real Estate Ventures, LLC, 
which is affiliated with Green Street St. Louis. Uh, Nicole Blumner of Green Street is here tonight, and uh, she'll be available if you have any questions. Uh, this, again, is an aerial photo of the rezoning site, which we previously saw. And as I mentioned, the uh, mixed-use development project would be on the parcel on the far left, 4591 McCree Avenue. The uh, two parcels on the right, 4565 and 4565 rear, um, uh, uh, is where the dog park and uh, restaurant are currently being constructed under uh, the existing zoning. Uh, the uh, Next map is an existing zoning map for the area. It shows that most of the area is zoned K unrestricted uh, along McCree between Van Avenor and Kings Highway, uh, which again prohibits uh, residential uses, and that's the reason for the rezoning. Um, the, uh, the photos that you see in front of you are of the existing industrial building, which will be demolished and replaced with the project uh, that we previously referenced. The, uh, City's strategic land use plan um, designates the site now as an opportunity area, and I just use the, uh, the map from the, the Sloop Amendment. Um, and again, uh, the opportunity area includes or encourages flexibility uh, where the land use is in transition, and uh, so the rezoning is in conformity with the strategic land use plan. The uh, Proposed rezoning of the three parcels would achieve three objectives according to the zoning administrator, including that the proposed use would bring new housing and neighborhood commercial opportunities to the uh, immediate area, uh, in addition to the two other items uh, cited. Uh, as we saw, the rezoning is in conformity with the sloop, and staff is recommending approval. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And again, Nicole Blumner of Green Street St. Louis is also available for questions. All right. Thank you, Roman. And Nicole said, I will see if we have any questions. Uh, we'll get, begin. Uh, Alderman Boyd, who I think is still on the pause at this moment. Uh, Commissioner Manton. Uh, only question for Nicole, when do we get to see uh, some fancy renderings for this new building? Yeah. Uh, thanks. Um, and thanks, Roman. Uh, we... Uh, have done just at this point just very conceptual thinking about this, um, knowing that we want to do a residential building at this location, but until we really had been able to know about the rezoning, we didn't want to um, invest a lot in um, design. So that'll be our next step, and I would say within the next uh, six months, we should have more to show you. Great. No further questions. Thank you. Commissioner Boaz. No questions. I'm still looking forward to the dog park bar. <laughs> Thank you. No question. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Uh, no questions. I second the dog park bar comment. I'm excited about that, and I also just want to commend the continued rethinking and reuse of this part of the property, just adding to. Um, Really tremendous growth and momentum and redevelopment of Forest Park Southeast. So thanks for being here tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Commissioner Peoples. No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Goodman. No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Vines. No questions. Looks like a great win. Thank you. Uh, my final statement is simply, I've never seen a commission so excited about a dog park and let it go on the record that we are enthusiastic about that very much so. Uh, with that, I will entertain a motion for the recommended action on the uh, property of 4591-4565R, the creek, uh, going from K to H. Move, so move Commissioner Long. Second, Boaz. This is moved by Commissioner Long, second by Commissioner Boaz. Call for roll. Call for previous roll. Hearing any objections? Hearing no objections, uh, the... Uh, action has been approved by the commission at this point. Uh, the next item for Roman is 8520RZ on North Broadway. Very good. This is a proposed rezoning of three parcels, uh, 2000 to 2006 and 2020 North Broadway and 2001 to 2021 North 2nd Street. Um, and this would be a rezoning from, again, the K unrestricted district to the H area commercial district. Uh, the site is uh, one and two-thirds acre in size. It includes uh, the entire city block, 320. Um, 
and it's located in the near North Riverfront neighborhood. Uh, the existing uses are a warehouse building and a vacant lot. Uh, the, again, the building footprint is a little smaller than what you see on the map. Uh, a portion of it was, uh, was demolished. Uh, so it roughly makes up about half of the, the, the city block. It's an L-shaped building currently. Um, the petitioner is proposing the development of a $34 million mixed-use development project. Um, and uh, since the uh, K zoning district doesn't allow residential uses, the petitioner has requested a rezoning. The petitioner is 2000 Broadway LLC, uh, which is affiliated with Black Line Real Estate. Michael Schwartz of Black Line is, is here tonight and, uh, and will be available for your questions. Uh, this again is an aerial photo of the uh, rezoning site, which includes that entire block, and you might have a better sense of the, uh, the building footprint. It's basically the area, the, the L-shaped area that you see uh, in white um, within the, the red outline. The uh, existing zoning map uh, uh, for the uh, area shows that much of the uh, uh, area is zoned K, unrestricted. Um, the area to the left uh, is, is a light gray color uh, that you can't make out. That's the J Industrial District, which, uh, which in some cases allows residential, but for the most part doesn't. Um, and again, that, that's the reason for the proposed rezoning to the H District. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is a rendering of the proposed mixed-use development project. As you can see, uh, uh, well, Black Line always does great, uh, great renderings. Hopefully the building will turn out that way. Um, so you can see that the, uh, the, the parking lot that's being proposed uh, uh, is where much of the uh, portion of the uh, uh, building that was torn down is, is currently located. Uh, there would be uh, a little bit of uh, ground floor commercial, about 10,000 square feet, not on Broadway, but on one of the side streets, and uh, the rest of the complex would be uh, uh, micro-apartments for the most part. Next slide, please. The uh, city strategic land use plan designates the site as a specially mixed-use area, thanks to uh, Amendment Number 21, and again, that designation encourages a, a mix of land uses. The site, uh, again, is also located within the boundaries of the North Riverfront Commerce Corridor, land use plan, um, which recommends residential uses on the upper floors of, of the buildings in that particular part of the planning area. And uh, the uh, rezoning of the three parcels would achieve uh, four objectives. Uh, according to the zoning administrator's report, uh, it would result in the adaptive reuse of a significant structure that is currently vacant and underutilized and would bring new housing and neighborhood commercial opportunities to the immediate area, among other items. Again, the uh, rezoning is in conformity with the SLOOP and the, uh, the topical plan, and staff is recommending approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and Michael Schwartz of Black Line is, is also available. All right. Thank you, Roman, for that. And I will make a note that there is a letter of support in the packet from the Alderman Hubbard uh, for this project at this point. Uh, we'll begin. Uh, I'm going to hold, uh, Mr. Schwartz, if you just hold for questions at this point. Uh, we'll go with Commissioner uh, Batson first. Um, no questions, really. I think it's a really cool project. Yes, and I agree with Roman. It's a great rendering. We've had a couple of instances in the past year or so of uh, sort of these pioneer residential projects in industrial zones. So um, hopefully that's a, a trend that continues and hopefully continues in, in this area as well. So exciting project. Thanks for thanks for investing your money and time here. All right, thank you, Commissioner Boas. No questions. I second Commissioner Benton's comment. Commissioner Bradley. No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Yeah, uh, no questions. I just uh, third my colleagues here. I think it's incredibly exciting to see this sort of redevelopment, um, particularly something that's going to preserve a historic aging brick building on our near North Riverfront and bring uh, new residents to that part of town. So thanks for investing here and uh, looking forward to the project. Thank you, Commissioner Peoples. No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Goodman. Commissioner Goodman. Okay, Commissioner Vines. Uh, no questions. I just want to say that about 15 years ago, I went to a warehouse party at one of those buildings on the North uh, Broadway corridor, 
and I was asking myself how long until someone realizes the potential here, and it's great that it seems like that's finally coming to fruition. So keep up the great work. And now we know why one of the buildings may have to come down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with that, uh, I do I do have a question for you. I heard him say micro apartments. Can you talk about square footage and, and rentals and, and some of your demographics earlier with rentals? Sure, yeah. Um, there, there's no micro apartments here. Um, average unit size is about 750 square feet. Um, so they're very normal size. This is a... <clears throat> um, and then one other clarification, um, uh, the 11,000 square feet of commercial space does face Broadway. Um, it's not, it, it faces Broadway and Chambers. So it's on that prominent from first floor. Um, uh, Sorry about that, Mike. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Um, it, uh, it would be not only a mixed-use project, but also mixed income. Uh, we've applied uh, through MHCC um, for the 4% uh, uh, LIHTC program, so we are waiting to hear from that. Um, 125 of these units would be income-restricted, uh, with the remaining uh, as um, market rate, um, rental rates um, for the income-restricted, um, from about uh, average from about five ninety five to eight forty five depending on size and how many bedrooms and everything um, so it, it true mixed use mixed income um, you know we think that that's uh what uh, what the area and the city needs mm -hmm. and, you know, and what type of amenities are in the There's, um on-site management, uh, fitness center, community room, game room, um, storage, recycling. Um, there's no pool or anything, but uh, like I said, fitness center, community room, meeting rooms, uh, you know, amenities like that. Okay, thank you. Outdoor, outdoor space. Um, and then one other thing to notice, I'm surprised nobody asked, um, as you see in here, the plan calls for 114 parking spaces. We obviously have 146 units plus commercial. Um, we are in the process of redeveloping um, the building a block south, or two blocks south at 1920 North Broadway. That is uh, going to be the new headquarters of uh, Evolution, which is a high-tech apparel manufacturing company. There's going to be about 150 jobs there. Um, we are working on purchasing basically the western half of the city block in between our two buildings. That'll be another 95 parking spaces. That wasn't included in here because we didn't need any kind of sloop amendment or zoning amendment for that. Um, but uh, both that uh, additional parking will serve both properties. Um, and we are on a bus line and everything like that. So we, we don't foresee the need for one to one, but we will have it if, if needed. Okay. Thank you very much. And the last point is you notice we're dog lovers. I didn't hear you say anything about a dog park. You know, there's, <laughs> yeah. all, of our, all of our places are dog friendly. There's, <laughs> there's dog run, there's outdoor space. So, yes. Yeah. All right. Very good. With that, I'll entertain a motion for the recommended action of rezoning K to H on this property line. Move to approve. Second. It was moved by. Bind. Seconded by. Boyd. Boyd, thank you. Previous roll. Oh, previous roll. Hearing any objections? Hearing no objections, approved with previous roll. Thank you very much uh, on that. Oh, no, no previous roll. If you want Alderman Boyd to vote, you need to actually do a roll call. Oh, okay. No, I missed one. Yeah, okay. okay. Very good. Let's call for vote at that point. Thank you. I Alderman Boyd. Aye. Commissioner Banton. Aye. Commissioner Boyes. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Long. Aye. Commissioner Peoples. Aye. Commissioner Goodman. Aye. Commissioner Bynes. Aye. The chair Strzok votes aye. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, it's Don. Yes, sir. Um, if I could just, uh, while Roman 
takes a breath and sits down, and, and Cecilia will be up. Just make a couple comments. Uh, this is the Planning Commission, so Earl, uh, they're both dog lovers, and they've noted that this particular dog park will have a bar also. Yeah. Adds to the love. Um, and to Jake's uh, comment um, about us being true and, and working on making sure we update the strategic land use plan, um, Roman has a new assignment, and that's an assignment to prepare a scope of work for having a consultant uh, do a comprehensive look at the strategic land use plan, uh, not just these things that we try to do in a, on, a, on a spot basis. So, uh, unfortunately, the money for that was a COVID suffering uh, deletion from the budget as it was finalized, uh, but we're going to do the scope of work and have some hope for possibilities for the funding, so I just wanted to mention that. So. All right. Thank you, Paul. With that, the senior is our next presenter for number, uh, number five on your agenda and then number 11. Yes. Okay. This is a continued conversation from the last meeting. Um, this item on your agenda is an action item for the Design Downtown STL proposed neighborhood plan. The public review comment period was advertised and open from October 27th through November 20th, and copies of the draft plan were available at the Central Library here at 1520 Market Street and online with comment forms and multiple methods to send feedback to staff. While no comments were received during that time uh, at the presentation during the public hearing last week, we did hear um, from Missy Kelly and Scott Page, as well as four additional persons who spoke as part of the presentation. Um, and discuss both content and positive affirmations of the plan and the process. Um, and then there was additionally one person who was on the line but unable to stay for the entire meeting and express their support via the comment chat function. All of the information regarding, regarding staff findings and recommendations for the proposed plan are available in the resolution. However, there are a few things I'd like to bring to your attention for this presentation. The first is the minimum submittal requirements for the neighborhood plans, which were adopted by the Commission in July of this year. Uh, overall, staff has found the plan to be in compliance with each of the requirements, with one exception. Let's go to that. Uh, the community engagement component um, does require that the planning team collect demographic information throughout each phase to ensure that the feedback is representative of the demographics of the planning area. However, the planning team was not made aware of this requirement and was therefore not collecting information throughout their process, um, which began in June of 2019. Given this information, as well as the fact that the plan includes a key strategy, uh, which is strategy 1.3A, to increase diversity and civic governance by creating an implementation task force with increased representation from American, African Americans and other people of color to guide implementation decisions and activities for the plan, Staff does recommend that the Planning Commission use their ability to consider flexibility within the minimum standards uh, to allow this exception. As it relates to the strategic land use plan, the proposed neighborhood plan and planning team does not recommend any changes to the strategic land use plan. Go to the next slide. In staff's review, we found that it may be beneficial to amend the sloop uh, for the sub area that's identified in the design downtown plan as work industrial space. Um, to allow for and encourage the development of office, light industrial, and flex space, and discourage further development of residential, thereby encouraging the clustering of residential development within the areas called out for mixed use and residential sub-areas instead. Staff will uh, further investigate the land and building character within these areas and review the potential changes for SLOOP at a future annual update and provide recommendations to the Commission at that time. As it relates to zoning, the Design Downtown Plan provides a few recommendations for changes to the current zoning within the planning boundaries. On a short-term basis, the plan recommends a strategic, uh, the strategic use of the Special Use District, uh, which you have seen a couple recently, to tailor zoning regulations downtown. However, the legislation has not been drafted nor refined with the Planning and Urban Design Agency um, or the zoning section. Additionally, the proposed plan provides a recommendation for a form-based district to include uh, and require active street frontages uh, and regulation of street development such as uh, curb cuts, urban setbacks, and active street frontages, eliminating non-accessory parking lots. So these recommendations could be implemented in the future as a result of this planning effort 
in collaboration with a consultant and the city departments that would be applicable. While this plan can become the groundwork that is laid uh, to develop those uh, recommendations, it will take some work um, to develop the standards to be adopted and administered at a later time. Next slide. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm a little bit behind here. Okay, as it relates to the blighting study and redevelopment plans that we regularly review at the Planning Commission, the plan has um, a couple of recommendations. Strategy 1.5C considers, uh, requires or asks to consider establishing workforce housing requirements to access development incentives and to reserve incentives for those projects that provide 25% of units to those making be below 120% of the area median income. Additionally, Strategy 2.1A uh, targets requests that the city provide target retail incentives to um, designated retail corridors. So these are strategies that the planning staff will consider in reviewing and providing recommendations for blighting studies and redevelopment plans within this geography in the future. Another point to bring to your attention is that the request would remove and replace the existing neighborhood plan within the geography. The current neighborhood plan covers a larger area than is proposed uh, in this plan. However, Go to the next slide. In reviewing the current plan, staff found that the recommendations do not provide any substantial recommendations in the neighborhoods to the north, which would no longer be covered. The Downtown Development Action Plan has these focus areas that are shown on the screen here, which provides most substantial recommendations, and therefore staff recommends repealing the plan in its entirety. Of note uh, is that the Project Connect section within SLDC will be embarking and following the minimum standards in partnership with us and PDA on a neighborhood planning effort, uh, which would include these neighborhoods and would allow the neighborhood residents of those areas to develop more concrete plans with substantial recommendations that focus on each neighborhood. In, in addition to the existing neighborhood plan, the proposed uh, design downtown SCL plan overlaps with the downtown transportation study, which was adopted as a topical plan in December of 2018, just a couple of years ago. Design Downtown uh, recommends some changes to the study and staff agrees with some of the elements given recommendations um, from the plan were discussed in further detail and with a great level of participation. Um, and so we'll go over those next, but um, staff does recommend some changes be made to the proposed plan. On pages 162 through 163, staff recommends that A Street be amended to dep depict and include the section which is currently proposed in the multimodal transportation study. So um, the proposed plan recommends removal of the cycle track on A Street, um, given that the, there's a cycle track that's currently being proposed and um, in planning stages on 7th Street. Um, however, that 7th Street cycle track has been initiated, it's not in construction phase, and therefore not yet final. Therefore, 8th Street can continue to be proposed as a two-way cycle track, particularly south of Walnut to provide a connection to the neighborhoods south of downtown uh, and the, the, otherwise the 7th Street cycle track would need to dead end at Walnut Street. Go to the next slide. On pages 190 and 191, uh, staff recommends that the Chestnut Street for the proposed plan be amended to allow for the piloting of temporary closures, uh, but with the exploration of various street calming measures such as texture changes and plaza like fields that could include a multi-use path at the sidewalk level without necessitating the closure of the street, but allowing for regular, regular temporary closures and safe pedestrian activity without introducing additional confusion within the street grid. Finally, on pages 166 through 167, staff recommends that Cole Street be amended to allow for the exploration of bike infrastructure uh, as called out in the transportation study with a particular call to attention um, to the blocks in and around the America Center, which may pose a conflict with truck and loading facilities. While this is not an immediate priority cycle track in general, this approach allows the city to open options for alternative designs um, and or route solutions in lieu of removing a desirable component of the bike street grid. In addition to the changes recommended in the proposed plan, staff does recommend some changes to the transportation study to align with the design downtown plan. This includes Locust Street, which is currently showing a two-way cycle track. Um, 
so changing that to a Shero in order to retain on-street parking for businesses on Locust. Additionally, all of them emerged as a better bike connection due to the already existing infrastructure west of 20th Street um, and excessive street width that can easily accommodate additional bike infrastructure. So we are recommending that change. Additionally, um, Chestnut Street from 15th to Tucker is recommended to be amended to allow for the exploration of the same street calming measures we talked about before, including textured pavement and regular temporary closures. Um, this is also supportive of what is proposed in the Gateway Mall Master Plan. Um, there, uh, it expresses a desire for event-based closures. So this will allow the street get grid to remain intact and limit confusion for vehicular users while still allowing for safe pedestrian activity um, and a greater cohesiveness between the Gateway Mall blocks. Uh, we've already discussed uh, 7th and 8th Street, so staff is recommending that the transportation plan um, show and include the cycle track on 7th Street as plans are currently in motion. Staff is finally recommending that Cole Street, uh, as previously mentioned, allow for the exploration of alternative route solutions through the America Center blocks given the conflict between bike and truck traffic identified by the downtown design downtown planning effort. The other plan which is recommended to be repealed is the Central Business District Streetscape Design Manual, which is adopted as a topical plan in 2004. Staff agrees given that the plan is not in use, and while some elements were implemented early in adoption, it's no longer reflective of the improvements that the downtown neighborhood stakeholders would like to see. Additionally, many of the recommendations of the plan um, that they would like to see continued are incorporated in the Design Downtown STL plan with updates to reflect today's conditions such as pedestrian streets and a desire to meet, uh, to see more active street frontages. So uh, this is sort of the summary of all of the actions we're requesting that you take. Um, staff recommends the proposed plan be amended to correct any Scrivener's errors or cleanup items that staff has identified, as well as the changes that were discussed as it relates to alignment with the multimodal transportation plan. Um, staff finds that the request is in conformity with the strategic land use plan and the minimum submittal requirements for neighborhood plans, with the one exception of the community engagement um, and tracking of demographics given the inadequate notice of said requirement um, and given the intentionality that is outlined within the plan to increase um, diversity within their civic governance. Staff recommends approval of the resolution to adopt the design downtown STL neighborhood plan um, which would thereby be repealing the Central Business District Streetscape Design Manual topical plan, um, the Downtown Development Action Plan it's an, in its entirety um, and in its place, uh, providing the Design Downtown STL plan as a neighborhood plan um, that would apply for downtown and downtown west neighborhoods, and thereby amount, amending uh, multimodal transportation uh, site topical plan as described in your resolution. That is it. All right. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, let me remind everybody, just to bring you back up, last, a few weeks ago, we had a public forum at that time. Uh, we had Missy Kelly from downtown St. Louis who presented. We had uh, also at that point Scott Page from Interface Studio. LaShawn Lewis uh, was here present. Uh, we also had Jason Johnson. Uh, we had Jason Hall and also Valerie Patton. All of this, all of them addressed us at that point. Uh, there have been two opportunities for uh, commissioners to have uh, other conversations and inquiries with the team at that point. So at this point, I will entertain a uh, question from the commission as we move, as we go forward. Uh, I'll begin with Commissioner Boyd. Uh, I believe Missy's on the line. So again, Missy, I will allow you Hello, I'll allow you to dictate uh, or direct if there's other team members on to who the questions would be going to. So, Jeffrey Boyd, uh, Commissioner Alderman Boyd, if you would, please. No questions, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Banton. Yes, uh, three questions. One on uh, your advisory committee, one on parking, and then one on implementation. So, first question, the advisory committee for this planning effort um, included includes a lot of C-suite level executives, and we talked about this a little bit uh, at the at the uh, public hearing. Only a couple neighborhood residents, and I didn't see any. Maybe I missed some of any small retail business owners. Um, 
So my question is, do you think that the right people were included at the decision-making level or given decision-making opportunities, neighborhood residents and these small business owners, to help lead the plan? And if not, then do you think their input is properly reflected in this plan? Okay, um, I'll start with that one. Thank you for the question, Jake. Um, so there were three residents on the uh, the committee. One of them since has moved out of downtown, so that leaves two, but at the time she was a, a downtown resident. So we had three residents on there. Um, we um, we had the, the thing that I think is really important to remember is that that committee was just one, it, it met six times over a year and a half period. It wasn't the primary source of input. It was more um, an, an, um, a committee to which we shared what was being heard in the other aspects of our community engagement and as we were starting to, to craft and mold the plan. So I just want to be clear that, that, that this plan was met, developed primarily from the input and feedback from the committee. However, they were essential in helping us, um, you know, in just guiding us through that process. Um, the engagement uh, with the two uh, open houses, one in person, one virtual, the many one-on-one um, -on -one conversations that we had with small business owners, with residents, with um, people from across the region, um, that's really where the, the meat of the engagement came from. Now, that said, we, we certainly um, uh, uh, really held with high regard the input that we did get from the committee because obviously um, the, the larger businesses are important um, to downtown as well. So I, I don't mean to minimize their role, but I want it to be considered in context. Um, Scott Page, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? Uh, no, no, I think that's a, that's a, a really good summary. Uh, and yes, we were very deliberate in making sure that we were going to where people uh, are. So whether that's uh, the Downtown Neighborhood Association, businesses, uh, events that were already taking place in, in downtown St. Louis. Of course, all of that changed when the pandemic happened and we had to shift. But uh, prior to that, which did cover the majority of the planning process, we were we were out talking with folks uh, from day one. So the simple answer to your question is yes, I do believe that it's reflective of uh, of, of the comments and, and concerns of many different people in downtown. Uh, and we were very um, deliberate during the process that any time we received any public feedback, we presented that back to them uh, so that we would have the opportunity to say, did we get this right? Um, where did, you know, if we didn't, what did we miss? And that's how we refine the process in a continual feedback loop. Were residents and small business owners ever given an opportunity, though, to drive the process or be part of that decision-making team? You want me to start, Missy? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, so one of the first... Uh, meetings that we had when we started this process was with the Downtown Neighborhood Association. Um, we did seek to connect with property owners and business owners in downtown. We talked with them early on. We did almost 100 one-on-one -on -one interviews, of which uh, a, a, a large percentage were business owners, property owners, or, um, or residents. And so that was very much, those questions and that process was very much designed for us to learn how best to connect with folks in downtown and what the key issues are that the plan absolutely needed to address. And I would also add that, um, from, frankly, from the small business owners especially, there were there were several like um, there were several several of those who received more than one one on one meeting. So they were very active and interested, and so they would come back after thinking about something or seeing something and ask for another meeting, and they got it. So, um, you know, there were there were definitely one-on-one -on -one conversations with small business um, small business owners and residents. Okay, thanks. I think uh, I think you guys definitely made a, a an effort to get input from those those groups. I think probably in the future and in, in endeavors such as these, it'd be good to have maybe a separate committee, either specifically of residents or small business owners that have a seat at that decision making table because um, downtown will only succeed when everyone is, is included. 
All right, okay, another quick thing I wanted to say to that is that to your point that, that, that you just made it, we won't have to wait for the next planning process. We will include them um, in the implementation task force, which is really going to drive the implementation of all of this, and they will be critical to that, um, to that process. So, um, so I appreciate the feedback, and we will definitely apply it there. Uh, second question on parking. So um, there's a very sad map in this plan that shows that 20% of all downtown parcels are right now dedicated to um, parking. And there's several mentions of a plan undergone or under that's underway right now from SLDC, a parking parking study. Um, but I didn't, and maybe you know, maybe I missed it. It's a, it is a large document about any specific parking recommendations, um, such as not making sure that no, no new parking at street level is allowed, for example, as a potential policy recommendation. Does the plan have any specific policy recommendations regarding parking, given our overabundance of parking right now and the need for street level activity? Yeah, and, and Cecilia just mentioned this. It's one of the recommendations we made with respect to zoning um, about uh, uh, t taking away the ability to do non-accessory surface lots, for instance. Mm, okay. it's, really, it's really a big issue. And we did coordinate with, uh, with the parking study, but it's still ongoing. They've been doing it in chunks uh, of downtown. They've, they've completed a piece uh, next to the American Center. They've completed the Creek Landing. So as they've been going through that process, We've been coordinating very closely with them, which has helped to shape the recommendations uh, to, to this topic. And last question on implementation, um, and this actually might be more of a question for uh, Don and planning staff than it is for the, the planning team, but um, at the public hearing, we Commissioner Vines uh, mentioned uh, a building that was demolished that seemed to go against what the previous uh, downtown plan had had recommended. So my question is, as this gets implemented and, and projects come, maybe new construction projects, maybe renovations, but I'm assuming there will most certainly be demolitions in the future around downtown as well. Are demolitions reviewed um, to see if they conform to the adopted plan for the area? And if not, why not? But, so the specific uh, triage for demolition review uh, incurs um, areas that are national historic districts, local historic districts, and preservation review areas. Um, it's not necessarily driven by this plan. So the geography of downtown, that's the national register districts, get reviewed to the standards of national register districts, and then there's a general catch-all of some demolitions uh, geographically being reviewed by preservation review districts. With that said, um, there is um, across the city and potentially in downtown still some areas that might uh, eventually become uh, uh, moved into the historic district category, which provides for a higher reg regulation. So as a follow-up question to that, um, this might be addressed to Scott. Do you know if there are any other cities across the country that do um, review demolition permits and requests per neighborhood plans? Um, or is that a policy that you think you might recommend for St. Louis? You know, you know there, there, this is a struggle across cities, uh, unfortunately, and it's, um, it's a struggle with respect to preservation, preservation law, the context in which we're able to limit or control market uh, and investment. Um, so, so the short answer to your question is no, not well. I, I've seen cities try. Um, I, I think to Don's point, if you have historic designation, then you're in a lot better position. Uh, wh what we're trying to do in this, in this work is by broadening the voices that are involved in implementation through the task forces that, that Missy mentioned that there's more accountability uh, and there's more eyes on what is happening downtown. It's not just the responsibility of the city, it's the responsibility of the residents and business owners, SLBC, and many more. And that's, that's the, the kind of culture that we wanted to create around this plan and its implementation. 
One of the things, uh, Scott, you may have the ability to pull up the statistic, but since the plan from 20 years ago and a great deal of vacant buildings uh, that were historic and sought historic designation, uh, I think it was uh, something like 126 that were were uh, restored in the last 20 years. Got it. That's uh, that's my uh, those are my three main points of uh, questions that I wanted to make sure are, are on the record. Um, you know, the last one coming up because of those buildings that were recently demolished for a MLS parking lot or near the MLS stadium. So, you know, the, the plan called for vibrant streets, something there's some large percentage number saying that uh, the street frontage in, in downtown is, is not very good. Um, so I think, you know, anytime we have an opportunity to, at least make sure we're not going backwards is 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 good. Well, one of the things I mentioned when we had the smaller work sessions is taking steps now that add some things uh, through the zoning code that become law when things are reviewed. And, of course, there will be redevelopment plans that will come uh, through the Chapter 99 process through us that will have some asks and some recommendations. We will review those per this plan. Thank you, Commissioner Banton. Uh, Commissioner Boaz. I do not have any questions, but I just want to compliment staff on providing the opportunity for the workshop that I wasn't able to attend, but also the really detailed review with the other documents. That was very helpful. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Bradley. No questions. Just a uh, comment on the plan. You guys did an outstanding job, and thank you for all your efforts to uh, make uh, downtown a better place. Thank you so much. Thank you. Commissioner Long. Uh, just one question that I had not thought about until uh, Commissioner Banton brought up the um, those structures on 1900 block of Olive. Um, and this is maybe a question more for staff, but um, once this neighborhood plan is adopted and it kind of sets our roadmap for downtown's future, and I think about legislation that um, gets passed that creates uh, SBDs, CIDs, and in the creation of those special districts, oftentimes um, they're created to promote, they can alter plans after the fact is basically what I'm saying, the way that the CID for the MLS calls for enhanced parking and things like that. And it was specifically drawn to include that structure in 1900 olives. Um, I guess my question is, is, are there not instances in the future that we should anticipate that could alter this plan legislatively that we haven't even thought about um, pending a new development or a new um, project uh, in the, over the next five, ten years? I, I, I'd like to think that there's always change that might be coming that we haven't thought about, hopefully good change. Uh, we don't particularly have review of those particular techniques, um, but uh, the um, I hope the framers of those legislations, that legislation will be reflective of what's in the plan uh, and uh, would seek to work with the committees if there's something that we need to change. Okay. Um, we have specific review power over the chapter 99s uh, in the redevelopment plan. Okay. Other things, other, um, other, I, other activities have to comply with the zoning and existing city regulations. Right. Okay. Um, I, that that helps. And again, um, I've had a lot of space time with Scott and Misty, I feel like, over the last couple of weeks. And I just want to appreciate both of you for, again, uh, being here tonight, your whole team for the well thought out um, engagement you guys have done. Really excited about this plan and the future of downtown. So thanks again. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Uh, Commissioner Peoples. No questions. Okay. Commissioner Goodman. No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Vons. I just want to also thank you for being accessible and inviting um, the, me and the other commissioners to a uh, kind of a 
you know, private kind of scrutinizing session about the plan. I think the plan looks great on paper, and I am just fingers crossed that um, the powers that be um, are compelled to enforce the plan, um, and that somehow there are some legislative consequences to those who do not. Um, because I remember the downtown plan very well, and I was so excited about it until it was rendered effectively meaningless by the demolition of the Century Building. So I really have high hopes for this one. I'm cautiously optimistic. Thank you so much for the time and effort you put into it and for engaging with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Vines. Uh, let me say to, to the group, first off, any plan is only good when it comes off the shelf and lays on somebody's desk to be worked on. Uh, and at some point in time, you had conversations with the public, with the residents, with business owners. Uh, the question I have for you, both Mr. and Scott, is after today, when the residents change or a business owner comes in or uh, somebody else comes in, how do they get to you to say, hey, I still want to be engaged, I still want to give you my input, and how do you, how do we get to, how do they get to you for open conversation moving forward? Sure. So the um, downtown of Link, as you're probably aware, is dissolving at the end of this year um, so that we can join forces with the new entity, Greater St. Louis, Inc. And so this, this plan will drive the redevelopment of downtown um, it, under that um, division of the entity of, of Greater St. Louis, Inc. that focuses on the urban core. This will be our primary tool for economic development. So guiding economic development. So you people, the, the community, just like they do now, they reach out to me um, and my staff through, um, you know, through downtown FTL, they can, they'll just do the same um, through Greater St. Louis, Inc., and we'll certainly welcome that. This, this plan really requires community engagement going forward. You know, it's not there. I don't think there's any one entity that's going to be able to you know, implement all of the things in this plan, especially the importance that has been stressed and you can see throughout the plan of programming um, and, and getting those those streets active and sidewalks active. That is going to require multiple organizations, um, including the Neighborhood Association, uh, to assist and to be part of making this um, come to life. So um, through Greater St. Louis, Inc., uh, people will be able to give more comments, to volunteer um, to help us do the implementation, um, et cetera. Uh, and I would suggest, and I think somebody made an earlier note, that moving forward, that demographic information and, and, and roll call of individuals and engagement be kept. Uh, okay. moving forward because it is, I think, it's very critical that you can state that the community has had a, an equitable voice in the conversation, not just simply uh, a voice. Thank you. Yes, we will definitely do that. Okay. So with that, uh, I've had all questions from all the, from the commissioners answered. At this point, uh, there's a litany of comments and recommendations from the staff that are available on screen at this point. I think it would be redundant to try to read them um, unless I'll leave it to Cecilia to best uh, oppose how we should, what we're voting on. I, I think I would just say um, staff recommends approval of the resolution to adopt the design downtown STL neighborhood plan and all, um, all additional um, actions that are outlined in the resolution. Thank you, Cecilia. Do I, I'll entertain I moved. Enthusiastically second. <laughs> yes, sir. Been moved by Commissioner Boyas and enthusiastically second by Commissioner Long at this point. Call for vote, please. Previous roll, please. I heard a call for previous roll. Do I hear any objections? Hearing no objections, approved with previous roll. Thank you, Commissioner Boy, uh, Alderman Commissioner Boy, for that. Uh, and with Chairman, that, Mr. Chairman. I think you're going to pass them on to Cecilia to do one more item. Yes, that is correct. Before you do that, um, I'd be remiss not to call out how much work Cecilia has done on this project and both in comments to the design team in conjunction with Connie, uh, Connie thomas Sewer and, and Scott. Uh, but uh, she's done terrific yeoman's work both with the design and planning thought, a regulatory thought, 
And as you can see by the resolution, completeness of getting the teams crossed and the I's dotted, so we have a substantive document to, to, to have and to, to move forward with. So there's some changes from this that we'll make with the, t with the team, uh, but I just want to call out and thank Cecilia. So. Thanks, Dan. Well, thank you, Donna, and we, we, you know, we can applaud Cecilia and your whole staff for all that they do. But thank you, Cecilia, on that. And with that, I will allow you to move to number 11. And the second thing, you know, I'm not in the room, but I'm only about 50 feet away with a microphone, so that's a little dangerous. That was dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing to, to thank is the Planning Commission. Think about the thoughtfulness of the comments the elbowing of some of the comments, the praise of some of the comments, participating in the work sessions, doing that all as volunteers. Some of you come from a specific background to be with us, uh, and we're ever appreciative of that. Uh, I often say and, uh, uh, that Jake uh, serves on another board that I'm familiar with that I'll sing high praises to, as does Randy serves on yet another board. Randy serves on the preservation board, uh, Jake serves on the Forest Park Advisory Board, as does Tracy. Uh, those, these three boards are very active and intelligent in thinking about what they say and do, and that's a real contribution. I want to make that known. A second thing, some of you know that I participate nationally in a group called the Big City Planning Directors of uh, Big City Planners. And uh, St. Louis is not known for its planning uh, historically. Uh, that's indeed true. And one of the things, as we've had in some discussions tonight, is that we make recommendations to the Board of Aldermen uh, for many things. Not everything comes past us, and I'm glad we do that. Uh, one of the things that's sort of a, a thing in St. Louis is the Board of Aldermen can overrule our recommendation, uh, but unlike other cities, uh, our recommendations can be just overruled with the Board of Aldermen in most, most, most cases by just a simple majority vote. But in other more planning-centric places, it takes a super majority of the Board of Aldermen to overrule a recommendation of the Planning Commission. So I just add that thought and talk and appreciate everybody's input. And Cecilia has one more item yeah. that she's doing on Alexis' staff. This next item on your agenda is for a large area redevelopment plan in the Ville and Greaterville neighborhoods. Uh, this redevelopment plan was actually reviewed by LCRA in May of 2019 and transmitted to PDA in November of 2020. Um, so the area is a total of 154.36 uh, acres in size and consists of 964 parcels across 20 city blocks containing occupied and unoccupied residential business and institutional buildings. While there is no developer uh, that was anticipated during the LC area review in 2019, we recently did find out that a developer has since submitted a proposal. Um, Florida Lease Development Corporation has proposed a renovation of 20 existing properties and the construction of approximately 300 homes for a total investment of about $80 million. We don't have a ton of information on that, but I did want to make you all aware. The strategic land use plan map designates the area as a mix of neighborhood preservation, neighborhood development, institutional preservation, and a small amount of business industrial preservation area. Given the high level of flexibility that's granted within the redevelopment plan to facilitate various uses throughout the area, staff finds the request in compliance with the strategic land use plan. And uh, this is the, for instance, that this is the proposed land use plan for the area within the redevelopment plan, which basically designates the entire site as mixed use. Therefore, staff finds the request in compliance with the strategic land use plan and finds that it meets the definition of blight as per the blighting report and recommends approval of the blighting study and redevelopment plan. Uh, the developer was made aware of the meeting, but I'm not sure that their uh, attendance was able to make it. Um, in any case, I'd be happy to try and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, let's move swiftly to this. Uh, Alderman Boyd, any questions? So, yeah, um, this, this this sounds familiar. Uh, did we hear this board bill in HUD a couple weeks ago? Yes. Did we have a, a board bill reference uh, related to this? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Um, just a, yet again, another great opportunity to do something, you know, 
of a larger scale like this as far as uh, redevelopment plans rather than the ones we choose these single-family homes or 10 package deals as they come along. Uh, I'm excited for the fourth ward uh, at putting this together. I did have an opportunity in the HUD hearing to um, hear from the developer, um, someone who's from that community. So that's really exciting, you know, a real stakeholder that grew up in that neighborhood, been part of that neighborhood, and wants to redevelop that neighborhood. So this is good stuff. So thank you for all the hard work you've done on this. Appreciate it. Uh, Autumn Boy, just question was the uh, all the women from the fourth district in, at that meeting or in support of the plan? Because I'm not seeing that. Uh, yes, she was. She she had to present the bill, so okay. she, she was there to respond. It does also look like and, the developer is available uh, at, at this meeting as well. So if you have questions, and the older woman as well. Okay. Is that Miss Hughes? That's correct. Thank you. Oh, there she is. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Benson. Uh, yes, just a question on the origin. Was this something that was initiated by LCRA, by the alder woman, by neighborhood? I, I believe it was oh, actually initiated by, by, by uh, the late alderman um, back in 2019, and it took a pause um, for the, the current alder woman um, to, take, uh, to take it from there. Got it. And... Uh, is uh, looking at just a, a map and my knowledge of the area, this is sort of a more hollowed out section of, of the neighborhood surrounded by more uh, densely populated areas. Is there a particular reason this area was, was chosen? And in addition to that, why isn't the commercial strip along um, Natural Bridge included in this? Um, so to my knowledge, um, I, I'm not sure the exact origin or, or how the boundaries were chosen. Specifically, I just know that the LCRA was working with um, the, the late alderman at the time um, to develop this. I, I believe that the, that the intent was to focus on the inner neighborhood uh, portion of this as opposed to the commercial corridor. Um, we do see a number of these go through um, over the years, large area redevelopment plans um, with, without a whole lot of specificity um, in order to entice developers um, to come in and, and take advantage of the tax abatement. Another way to add to that is as LCRA does more of these, they should have more detail in them to help guide and the developer. Very good. Well, uh, like Alderman Boyd stated, I think doing sort of these proactive uh, blighting studies for larger areas in the city that could really use some development is, is great. I'd like to see that take place in a couple other areas in the city. So uh, good work. Hope that this one is proves to be successful. Thank you, Commissioner Manson. Commissioner Boyles. No questions. Thank you, Commissioner Bradley. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Long. Hey, just really quickly, Cecilia, could you run down? You said it was eighty million dollar investment in three hundred homes. I thought you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The developer is also good. Cecilia. This came to us from LCRA, and uh, you're stepping in for for uh, Alexa, who might know. The developer is actually on, so I, I think we could divert that question and ask Ms. Hughes. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. First and foremost, I'd like to answer the first question, why was it Natural Bridge proposed? Um, at that time, Alderman Moore divided the area into what he designed as uh, geographic regions, and so I'm working with other developers in the area. That was one section that I was granted by Autumn and Moore in order to redevelop. Um, at that time, the fourth ward ends the boundary at Lexington as opposed to Natural Bridge, so there was an opportunity to um, continue past Lexington. The $80 million that's captured has to do with redevelopment. I heard you speak earlier regarding the demolition of a large number of buildings. Rather than taking that approach, I'm actually starting with rehabilitation of um, parcels that are on Mathis Avenue. I chose that particular area when the Alderman was assigning the particular region because that one has a smaller footprint, if you will, of the parcels that were available. So it makes of a greater opportunity to develop a smaller home uh, 
Thank you. I, and I was coming to you, give you the opportunity, so now you're now you're in the fire, so just stand by. Thank Any you. other questions, Commissioner Long? Um, the, the, the current property, is it all LCRA or LRA owned? That is correct. The current property that I am aiming to um, rehabilitate and new construction, those are either parcels that can be rehabbed or they're vacant lots that are suitable for new construction. How many, uh, how many homes do you anticipate rehabbing? I heard the 300 for the new development, but how many homes were slated for rehab, you think? There are at least 80 now. We continue to um, actually, I'd say, survey the area in terms of the parcels are the existing improved parcels that have the greatest opportunity for uh, rehabilitation. Those are the ones that we're starting with. Hopefully, our process will allow us to capture those that unfortunately are without a roof or the, the brick structure is such that we may not be able to uh, rehab them. But nonetheless, we're starting with those parcels that have the greatest possibility uh, for rehabilitation. Well, thank you for being here. Congratulations to all of them and Evans, who I see is on the call in the fourth ward. Great development. I appreciate it. And again, this started two years ago, although it was slated that um, I was the developer that came along later. I've been working with Alderman Moore, um, Alderwoman Evans, at that point, Committeewoman Evans. There's the committee woman on the call today, and a longtime resident, Julia Allen, is also here. So as far as community engagement, this has been a project that's been in place for well over two years. Thank you. And and all the women, uh, Evans, I'll give you a moment at the end of the questioning to close us out at that point. Uh, Commissioner Peoples, any questions? No questions. Commissioner Goodman? No questions. I'm just excited to see Alderman Moore's um, plans come to fruition, even though he's no longer with us by way of all the women of them. So congratulations, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Vines. Uh, just a comment. I really applaud you, uh, especially the component about rehabbing existing, as many of the existing buildings as you can. I think that um, St. Louis is competitive advantage. They don't build cities. It's cool anymore, and it's solid, and we've got to reuse our assets. Um, the one question I have is, um, are there any design standards implemented for the new construction in this area? Yes and no. Um, right now I have an ordinance in place that's historic preservation. That's where I'm starting with the rehab. My plan is once new construction is in place, it meets that ordinance and that level of preservation um, that's already established in the ward. Um, my experience has been with Vinton Park, uh, the older homes, 117 years plus. So super excited about rehab. One of my absolute favorite things to do ever. So. Cannot wait. Um, 4200 block of Mathis. It has the greatest number of existing buildings that I can start with. So, in the next month or so, I expect to get started um, on that block. So, excited. Excellent. Congratulations and thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Vaughn. Uh, at this point, I would actually invite all the women evidence just to uh, greet us and give us her comments on this so she'd spend time with us. I think it would only be appropriate to allow her an opportunity uh, to speak on this and to the commission. And she's on mute. <laughs> I'll start again. I am elated to be <laughs> at this meeting this evening. I also have, before I uh, make my statement, I also have a longtime constituent that's also here, and that's Julia Allen. If I'm not out of place, could I have her to say something on behalf of this uh, development that's about to take place in the Ville, if I may so humbly ask? Like, I'm going to say no to you, but I'm going to say yes, but I'm going to ask, me, ask Julia to be very respectful of the, of the place, of the location. Thank you. Go ahead, Julia. Thank you very much. I, I just want to say that I am so happy that somebody finally realizes the historic significance of my neighborhood. I've been here for 71 years. There is so much African-American history in my neighborhood that 
we we are we are represented at the Smithsonian Institute. People just have completely overlooked Laura, Alderman Moore, and Alderwoman Evans have been a godsend. They have actively engaged with the community. They've been very transparent. They've been accessible, and I'm just so happy because. For so long, our neighborhood has been a victim of institutionalized racism and social injustice. We have, the low, our neighborhood has the largest number of vacant lots and LRA properties. We have over 203 acres. The area has been blighted three times. And now we're still fighting to keep our three schools open. So I just say, God bless Laura, God bless Sam, and God bless all the women, Evans, for having the foresight, the vision, the courage to do something for our neighborhood. Thank you. you thank you for your comments, Julie. I know that all the women is always proud when her constituents can quote facts and stats about the, about the area. Uh, with that, again, we turn back to all the women others just for the last two statements. Okay, and I will make this quick since uh, I want to be cognizant of the time factor here. I, as I stated before, am very elated that we are able to continue to carry out Alderman Sam Moore's vision as well as my vision. Uh, for years, they have dismantled our ward, and now it's time to put it back together better than it was before. So uh, if I sound like I'm a little emotional, it's because I am. I've been a resident of the the Ville area for over... Don't tell, don't, don't tell, don't tell. Right, I said now, you know. Don't tell the story. <laughs> Well, thank you. For, for several years, decades, I'll put it that way. And, I, and I'm going to stop there because then you'll know my age. I'll, I'll... Well, we thank you. The, the commission is here to support those, those communities that want to do and grow our city. With that, uh, there's a recommendation on the board at this point. Cecilia, would you like to review the recommendation? Um, staff uh, finds the uh, request to be in conformity with the strategic land use plan um, and finds the area to meet the definition of light as per the lighting report and recommends approval of the Chapter 99 lighting study and redevelopment plan. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the Chapter 99 light redevelopment plan. Second. Previous role. It's been moved by, before I be called for the control. It's been moved by Alderman Boy and seconded by whom? Uh, Vines. Uh, Commissioner Vines. With that, call for vote. Previous role. Call for previous role. Any objections? Hearing no objections, it is now approved through previous role. With that, again, ladies, thank you very much for your commitment to the ward and to the honor of that of Sam Moore, who was a good friend of mine. Uh, so I thank you for that. To the commissioners, we have done the work. Uh, Julia, I mean, uh, uh, Cecilia, anything on your end at this point? No, sir. I appreciate your time. And uh, God, I, you, I know you have a mic, and I'm going to allow you. So one, one thing, Earl, you've been very delicate in not have asked people their age. <laughs> but as we talk about the list that the Board of Education has put out about school closures, yeah. One of the most terrific alumni of Sumner High School uh, mm -hmm. turned 81 last week, and that's uh, Tina Turner. So, wow. <laughs> one of my favorites. Right. <laughs> You're just so good at contributing. Very good. Uh, with that, let me personally thank the commissioners this year for your support. It has been a trying year. Uh, we, have, we have Zoomed our way through many commission meetings, uh, so I thank you for your patience and your attention. And your adherence to that, I try to get, I try to maintain some level of decorum and timeliness. Uh, to Don and your staff, let me thank you on behalf of the commission. 
Uh, you have made this job easy for us. You have an outstanding staff. Uh, so thank you for all the work that you've done and Cecilia and Roman and that whole crew. Uh, even the guy that's running the, that's running the computer back there that, that goes nameless sometimes. <laughs> but we do thank, we do thank Scott also for that. Uh, I pray that each of your family has a ho- pleasant holiday, whatever way you celebrate. Uh, it is going to be different, but I wish all of you a healthy and happy celebration of, nine, of 2020, seeing it leave, and truly a celebration of 2021, seeing it come. <laughs> With that, uh, I would entertain a motion to close the, ninth, the December meeting with our next meeting scheduled February the 6th. Family, so moved. Been moved. Second. Yeah, Second. Seconded by Alderman Boyd. And with that, go find a dog park for all you lovers and a bar. <laughs> I shall <laughs> <laughs> well, Hello, everybody. Bye. Good holiday. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Warehouse okay. party. Like. <laughs> <laughs>